as transient as the changing seasons and just as colorful. The largest migratory people on this earth remain the least understood. The Kuchi, shy, simple, nomadic people of Afghan Pashtun ethnicity of the Ghalji tribe, have always been greatly mistrustful of the outside world making them an almost impenetrable community. Up to now, little has been known about the Gucci, who have regularly been treading through the treacherous Afghanistan-Pakistan border for centuries, and even less has been documented. Due to this ignorance, and a number of other circumstantial pressures, the age-old life patterns of these ancient wanderers are now at risk of being changed forever. in Urdu and Persian means to move. So a Gucci is literally one who moves. And no one excels in the art and craft of moving as do the Gucci. Their large plain knotted bundles conceal the meticulous packing techniques that they've refined through the ages. Gucci have an expert understanding of how to wrap up their homes and entire lives, load them onto camels and donkeys, and take them to their next stop. Their youngest and most vulnerable are given the VIP treatment. To a people with very few worldly belongings, their children and their livestock are their true assets. These they endow with extra special care, given in the typical effective Gucci manner. Afghan border stretches up to a total of 2,400 kilometers. The Kuchi crossing points cover approximately 1,000 kilometers traversing various mountain passes. During the British rule up to 1947 and even into the 1960s, the entry of the Kuchi had been recorded and regulated. But since then, no record is being maintained. Hence, we have no accurate estimate of their total population in Pakistan. The Afghan government roughly estimates their numbers at 4 to 5 million and also reserves 10 seats for them in its parliament. The Kuchi fall under four broad categories. The first are the seasonal migrants between northern and southern Afghanistan. Then there are those that migrate between Afghanistan and Pakistan. A third group migrates between the colder and warmer regions within Pakistan. Whereas the last of the Kuchi migrants are actually those tribes that have settled down permanently in either of the two countries. These have abandoned their traditional pastoral occupation for small labor-oriented or trading jobs in different towns and cities. The major seasonal migration of the Kuchi begins with the onset of autumn and spring when they head out towards greener pastures. Their daily walk and nightly camping can last for as long as two months until they finally reach their destination. 
In pre-1947 United India days, the Kuchi would travel as far as West Bengal and Burma, trading Afghani goods along the way. Their demanding journeys and tough characters have inspired many a novel, song and movie. The Kabuliwala was one such short story by Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. The memorable 1978 Hollywood movie Caravans was another starring Anthony Quinn and nominated for an Oscar. Exposure gained through their travels has given the enterprising and adaptable Gucci an exclusive skill set. They have the ability not only to quickly pick up foreign dialects, but also to be able to conduct business in them. As the Gucci regularly camped on town and village peripheries, the men were known to sell fabric, fruit and kitchenware door to door. In Pakistan, Punjabi villagers would await the Gucci's winter arrival every year to have their mud walls built and canals cleaned of silt. Whereas in the northwest frontier province, many cities and towns today still have what is known as Kuchi bazaars, where decades ago, fabric was originally sold by these people. It was due to the Kuchi's unique exploratory expertise that in the late 19th century, 15,000 camels, accompanied by over 2,000 Kuchi cameleers, were brought to Australia to help unlock the country's unexplored interior for the building of railway lines. In honor of these pioneers, the train from Adelaide to Darwin is still known as the Ghan train, from its previous nickname, the Afghan Express, named after the Afghan camel caravans that trek the same route. Gucci children, having survived the odds and the severity of their treacherous travels in the wild, grow up to be extremely tough and well-seasoned. Even their dogs, the famous Gucci breed, has an extraordinarily large structure, and its ferocity as a guard dog is legendary. The Kuchi use their dogs to protect their livestock from wolves and other predators. The women are no less tough than the men. They, in fact, do more physical work with certain jobs falling entirely into the female domain, such as milking the animals, binding and collecting firewood in an environment that is very arid, filling up the traditional goatskin pouch with water from the nearest source and then carrying its substantial weight back to camp. also help pack and load the animals before moving, peg the tents, and of course do the cooking. They have been known to give birth while on the move, and not surprisingly, the newborn mortality rate is very high. Gucci consider it taboo to have their women photographed. To manage these few precious and rare shots of Gucci women, a huge amount of trust had to be built over a long period of time. 
Their multicolored beaded dresses and shy but no nonsense attitudes express a celebration and acceptance of their way of life. <laughs> For the Gucci, wealth takes the form of livestock rather than bank accounts. Their stock exchange comes crashing down if they lose their animals. The last decade has seen a severe drought. Because of this, Nomadic tribes have suffered great losses in livestock, forcing many to abandon their pastoral life. Gucci are therefore very attentive to their animals. Sick or injured creatures are never left to die, but treated with care till cured. These nomads possess a sophisticated body of ethno-veterinary knowledge. Although they live and migrate in sparsely vegetated environments, they know the regional plants and minerals well and use a number of them in the care of their diseased livestock. They also use commercially available medicine, but this is done without any professional intervention. When passing through local settlements, Gucci are finally able to replenish some necessary food items such as flour, tea, sugar and salt, as well as some personal items. It's a chance for them to indulge a little and gossip a little. It is also a good opportunity to stock up on fabric needed for an upcoming marriage. The Gucci are not so much conservative as they are protective. It is because of this protectiveness that they have managed to preserve so many of their ancient rituals. Be it making bread, traditionally baked in hot ash, or the celebration of a marriage with traditional dancing, singing and of course dining. The wedding menu is simple, comprising of a basic goat's meat curry, eaten with the traditional bread and tea sweetened with the sugar bought on their last trip to town. The dances, called Atan, are the Gucci's expression of joy for the newlyweds. Tempo and rhythm is driven by a traditional drum or often a whistle. All men, young and old, actively participate. The Gucci men follow these age-old movements in perfect sync. They know them almost as well as their ancient migration routes. The playing of the Cheraka, a two-stringed violin-like instrument, serves a reflective contrast to the dance. Made of a discarded tin container, the strings are wires from a motorbike's clutch, while the bowstring is horsetail hair.
But this elementary design, when coupled with the singer's plaintive voice, lends an intense potency to the song of the Gucci, weaving a spell that captures listeners in its magic. <laughs> The Zarif Khan Foundation has conducted the first ever extensive survey sponsored by UNDPGEF Small Grants Program Pakistan to determine the environmental impact of the Gucci presence in the country. Carried out since January 2007, under extreme security restrictions in the tribal areas and all the four provinces, ZKF team's survey covered approximately 100,000 Kuchi persons. Vital information concerning all aspects of their lives was gleaned. One alarming suspicion that was confirmed was that the ancient pastoral Kuchi way of life is rapidly disappearing. This is due largely to the past few decades' unrelenting political turmoil in Afghanistan and the more recent upsets in the tribal areas of Pakistan. One of the last and largest indigenous gypsy races in existence, the Kuchi, show us all how life in today's complicated world can still be lived so simply and in such harmony with the environment. We still have much to learn from the Gucci. Their people deserve our respect and their lifestyle our attention. Otherwise, just as so many indigenous cultures have been reduced to nothing more than words in history books, without our assistance, the Gucci too may one day only be remembered in stories.